Club of Ybor City is named one of the top haunted buildings in all of America. And ghost hunters from around the world have come this way to explore this building and make connections with the other side. person to this stuff. I've slept in haunted places and I've never felt like I feel today. My heart is racing right now. Isn't that funny? People were hanged from up there. Is that good? The closer I get, the crazier this thing starts to go off. Guys, I'm not making this up. This is insane. I wonder if I'm gonna find anything in this footage. I don't see no Steve's in here, but it smells amazing though. Pure cigar smell. I'll wait outside. Oh, the AC though is nice. Damn, Americans have so many varieties of candies. In Puerto Rico, we just have the basic of the basic. Anyways, I'm here for a water bottle. Steve said to get one. Ah, oh, here we go. Uh, that's the cheapest one. Two dollars. That's a lot of money. So be it. Two dollars, one eighty-nine. Okay. Hello, you know my name is Steve, and we're gonna spend the next couple of hours together. Now it is uh, Thursday night. The noise factor starts to elevate in this city as the weekend approaches, and uh, without even having to give her five dollars to. <laughs> the girl over there giving a concert, which, by the way, she sings amazing. So we're here with Steve, and he's gonna show us the dark side of Ebor, aka the haunting of Ybor City, the haunted buildings and the history. I'm so freaking excited, oh my god. Why do some spirits not travel on, let's just say to the light? It is said that when we die, we die three times. The first is our last breath. The second is when our soul leaves our body. And the third time, and to me the most poignant, the last time, and then he's ever spoken. But what is it that holds that spirit back? I always bring up the movie Ghost. Have we seen the movie Ghost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I've had some young crowd where they go, no. And then I go to Patrick Swayze. Who <laughs> he's wasn't supposed to be murdered, but he's murdered to get a series of numbers for an account with money in it, and he's totally unaware of it. But his spirit doesn't go on because his wife is next to be subject to be murdered. And so until, as a spirit, he is able to take the threat away from his wife, it's unfinished business. It is on March the 1st, 1908, to the north and east of this building, as a boarding house that's up in flames. It takes an hour for the fire department to arrive. They don't have enough water pressure to fight that fire, and so they throw dynamite into the burning building. The idea was if they drop the burning building, they can control the fire. The problem is, it sends the burning building, and the ensuing fire is rented by acres of 25 buildings in the original wooden central aspect buildings. But 12 men will die that night in what was the cantina. It was at this moment that Steve then took us to what was the first haunted object of the ghost hunt, which was the safe. 
that one of the 12 men that died on that fire was, if I remember correctly, either trying to save or remove in order to escape and go back to his wife. But because he was unable to, he ended up dying in the fire and thus is still to this day trying to escape to go back to his wife. But the interesting thing about this safe is that the EMF detector only picks up the left side of it. We had our friend over here test it out, which by the way had to be a man because most of these spirits are men and they only respond to men seeing as they think it's still the 1800s. The EMF detector only went off against the left side of it because that is where the spirit of the man is most attached to as that's where he was trying to either push the safe out of or take cover as he was, well, running for his life. The reason as to why you can't hear the EMF going off is because coincidentally this is also where my camera started malfunctioning and it completely lost the audio. It didn't record a single bit of audio, not just here, but also in some other parts of the ghost hunt where we had the most activity. So Steve says that we have to take a picture of each of these doors because one will be in focus and the other one won't. And then when we take a picture through that, it will apparently have facial recognition or reveal spirits. So let's give it a shot. Let's see if it's true. Door number one. Door number two. In the state of Florida to be operational with electricity. Yeah, I think you have to like put it against. Hello? Anybody there? Well, did you see it? I'll put a couple of replays here in case you missed it, but this truly gave me chills because it looks so much like a full bodied apparition, and just the way that it moves debunks any kind of reflection behind me, which by the way, the pitch black safe was in that exact spot, so there was absolutely nothing reflecting in that specific area of the window pane. And the way in which I moved the GoPro also does not justify the way in which the ghost just streams up to the second floor. So I'm going to leave it up to you to decide, do you think this is an apparition or can you debunk it as anything else? Let me know in the comments below, but this right here is honestly the most unintentional, solid piece of possible evidence that I could have ever dreamed of capturing in my first ever ghost hunt. It is Does the GoPro pick any of But everybody in those days was scared to Look at that. Beautiful. I wonder if I'm going to find anything in this footage. So this safe is um, apparently haunted. I wonder what happens if I put my hand in. Whoa. It's actually cold. Listen carefully, everyone. I don't recommend you do this, because it was immediately after touching the safe, without even asking Steve if I could, I started to feel really weird. Eventually Steve told me that it was relatively safe, but there was no way I would have known that. What if the safe had malignant energy and I touched it and exposed myself to it? It could have gone bad. So regardless if you go to a safe ghost tour or if you go ghost hunting by yourself, don't touch objects that you know are haunted without first checking if they're safe. I'm not gonna lie, I felt kind of weird after touching that safe. I don't know, I feel like as if I didn't eat and my blood sugar is like low. Headed to the next building. I'm loving this. I swear to God, my, I felt like my blood sugar like went down when I touched that safe. Maybe it's mental, but I don't know. Check my pulse. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Oh, 
Well, I didn't even feel like my pulse was that fast, so. Yeah, I feel, I just felt. And I've never really gotten that notification before. So it was weird. Well, that, like, that is creepy. And I usually watch, like, we watch, like, ghost shows and yeah, scary movies too. all the time. And, like, I get, I get, like, super scared during those, but, like, <laughs> I don't get that notification. Yeah, no, I'm totally chill, but I don't know. But then I start saying, no, it's mental, it's mental. <laughs> I was, I, I was telling him that, like, when I, ever since I've, like, been little, I felt like sometimes I can, like, feel energies and stuff. Yeah. Like, when I was little, we were looking at houses, and, like, um, we were looking at an old farmhouse, and the, I was, like, seven or eight years old. I was in my bedroom, which was on the second story, and it was attached to the attic, and I remember telling, my parents told me that I had said that I felt, like, really bad energy in the room. Like, I didn't like it. I was scared. Yeah. And then my mom told me years later that she felt, like, the same thing in that room, like, in that room and stuff. And so it was, like, weird that we both had the same experience. Well, I'm the opposite. I've slept in haunted places and I never felt anything. Really? Yeah, so I'm very curious as to what will happen in this tour. But that EMS thing was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I wish we had like a spirit box or something to like... They do say you gotta be careful with those, like don't bring it to your home. Oh, yeah, because you people, are, like they get attached to the box. So... I'll be in here, you be out there. Let's talk about a building that no longer stands. It's burned to the ground a little over three years ago where it was arson for profit. Two arsons in one week and then the spirit of Ebor, nobody gets arrested. <laughs> it's always had an interesting history. The most recent business that was here was the Ebor Spa Resorts. It was a gay bathhouse for years. But back in the day, it would look just like that building. They were twins. But back in its heyday, this was a Cuban coffee house. And in the darkness of the early morning, from the east and from the west, hundreds of men are lined up getting those espressos to start a 14-hour workday season. I'm not gonna lie, I feel weird. My heart is racing right now, dude. I feel like I'm like my blood sugar is low. My heart is racing and I feel woozy and almost like like a panic attack is surfacing, but not really. And like the more he tells the story, the more I feel that. I don't know. I don't know, I feel weird. Because you can see if you waited patiently enough, her spirit to go by the second floor windows. And a few minutes later, you could see it go by the first floor windows. Spirits always return to where they were the happiest. This... What happens next, I think, is a confirmation that her spirit was indeed affecting me because I do not recall hearing this, nor by anybody from the group. Where she was fulfilled and happy. But it, but it, but it begs the question, building being burnt to the ground, what the hell has happened to her? Alright, now Steve wants us to take pictures of this empty lot and see if we can catch Conchita, the depressed spirit. Um, let me see, let's put a flash to make it extra creepy. super weird though especially here like and guys I need you to understand something I'm not a sensitive person to this stuff I've slept in haunted places and I've never felt like I feel today ever since I, I touched that safe I don't know but I feel like my blood sugar like is going like this and I just 
felt my heart rate and it was like doom 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 and i'm not doing any i'm not doing any sort of physical i'm just standing here i i feel so weird and that's I'm, a good thing if you are a sensitive i'm not that's the thing well it's a first for me you may be would be your heritage. It's ever since I touched the safe, it's like I feel like. But it could be your heritage as well. It's a connection. Yeah. Because those spirits are Spanish and Cuban. Yeah. So. But it's wow, like, especially in front of that lot. All right, now we're going in here. Ooh, wow, that's so pretty though. Thank you. Love it. Wow, look at that. We got the old school Oscars, Floridian coffers. <laughs> that rhymed. So we've gotten cleared to go to the second floor, which is apparently very actively haunted. <laughs> Step straight out and walk straight ahead. Oh god. Please Lord, may my blood pressure thing not get worse here. Seeing as this is apparently the most active. Oh, I feel weird. Oh great. Great. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, ask you all to sit in those chairs over there. Please. I feel oh I feel like well, maybe this is just mental. This used to be a whorehouse. Knock out the small section of that wall. Wow. And place the mark. And there, for over 100 years, that monk has stood there. And I feel like panicky. I don't know. Oh, sure. Scary. <laughs> Boom. My heart is racing right now. Isn't that funny? I remember that moment vividly and I don't remember hearing any male voice say money or anybody in the group for that matter. I discovered it in post-production months later. Now, initially I thought it was saying money, but the more I reviewed it, the more it sounded to me like money, which is peanut in Spanish. And as it turns out, by just doing a little bit of research, Mani was actually a Cuban dance that originated in the 1800s. So because we were in a Cuban whorehouse and because I was the only young female in the crowd, I can't help but wonder, was this male ghost telling me to dance for him? <laughs> Anyways, um, even though I feel super weird, I'm gonna take these pictures of a monk that's been there. How long has the monk has, has, how how long has the monk been there? A hundred years. Oof. Okay. Notice how I just started feeling worse and worse and worse. I have reason to believe that because I didn't answer to the male ghost who wanted me to dance for him, he just began affecting me more and more and more. And what happens next is a chilling confirmation that he might have even gotten angry at me. because I ate not too long ago and I feel as if I haven't eaten 24 hours and I'm having like I'm on the border of an anxiety attack any minute and I so we're walking to the next one now and I feel fine I mean I still feel a little bit but I feel a lot better than I felt in there 
I don't know, a part of me is still a little skeptical. Like I keep thinking, oh, it's mental, it's mental, it's mental. But then I have moments where it just kind of hits me and I'm like, no, 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 this, this is not. Like I, I start stuttering and I, I don't know. It's so weird. But I guess, uh, I guess I'm getting my money's worth. I'm getting history and I'm getting affected by spirits in ways I never have before. All right, next up is the castle. And look at this place. This place is absolutely awesome. It, it looks like something you would build like not even in the 1900s. Damn, that is so pretty. So people were hanged back in the day from up there. And tons of people were killed that way. So now we gotta take more pictures. Hold on, I gotta get my camera. Wait, 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 wait. See if we got something. And we are now headed to the final location, which is the Cuban Club. And I feel pretty good right now. I'm really hoping that I don't feel weird, especially because Steve says, apparently I may be affected due to my roots. And seeing as this is a Cuban Club, Jesus, Mary, Jesus. See, I'm still stuttering. Let's just hope for the best. It was built in 1917 on top of the ashes of the original wood. In 1930, right over in that corner, was a young boy by the name of Jaime. Jimmy, for those of us that don't speak Spanish. He's arguing with his mother over what knows. He breaks free of his mother and runs into that gymnasium looking for his father. Whether he was chasing the ball, whether he was being chased, nobody really knows anymore. But he will disappear for two days. Now back in those days, in that gymnasium, which is now a cantina, besides basketball and an indoor bowling alley and an indoor running track and basketball, it was the one and only swimming pool in Ybor City. It was an odd rectangle, only about 10 feet wide, a little bit longer than 10 feet uh, and 10 feet deep. And it was built in an elevated area by an exit door because outside of that door, there was a spring and fresh water. And there's no electricity in those days. And so could you imagine a couple hundred sweaty Cuban men exercising and then jumping in that 10 by 10 by 10 foot deep body of water with no filters, pumps, and so it had to be manually pumped out, fresh water brought in. After two days, he's missing. When they're pumping the pool out, his lifeless body is found in the bottom of the pool. And so on our tours, especially my tours, we bring him a ball. And what's your first name? Manny. Manny. Manny and I are going to go by a set of stairs. You are all going to be right behind us. And we're all going to count to three in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres. And when we do that, we're all going to yell, hola, behind you. And when we do that, you're going to throw that ball out onto the floor. Okay? That way I know that that boy knows. We're here to play. We're here to have fun. He doesn't have to hide. Maybe we'll capture a little bit of his spirit. Oh my god, I am excited! So we're about to test the paranormal activity in visual form in the Cuban Club. We're getting locked in here too. Neat. Look at this. This is so pretty. 
And so creepy. to everybody and then I'm going to turn one set of lights on just for safety okay not too bright just for safety all right Steve has just given us EMF readers <laughs> I want to go to the ball wait so does it does the fact that it's flashing so much mean that there's a lot of energy? Yes, that plus the gauge. Whoa, it just stopped. Wait, why did this? Up here, where the pool was, 99% of the time, the meters will not work. What? He was just working over there. See, oh my god, look at that. When I turn over here, nothing. But when I turn over here, and I walk towards it. It starts to go up. Wow. Ooh, I just fell. Ooh, no, no, no. Are you kidding me right now? And then when I thought things couldn't get any more surreal, Steve pulled out the dowsing rods, which are basically these copper rods that you hold in the air and spirits can manipulate them by twisting them either to the left or the right, so they act as really good devices for yes or no questions. Now unfortunately, and also coincidentally, this is also the second time where my camera just completely malfunctioned and the audio just got completely corrupted, as you can hear. But it makes sense because, you know, this was the most direct contact that we had with an intelligent entity, which was Jaime, the little boy who drowned. So I really do believe that Jaime was just really using the energy from us and from my camera in order to be able to manipulate the rods. We asked him three main questions. If he knew he was dead, to which he answered yes. Then we asked him if he was stuck in the building, to which he didn't say yes or no, but then when we asked him if he was happy, he said no. And then I believe we asked him if he was angry, and he said yes. 
And if this doesn't convince you, because I can understand, this video is somewhat incomplete and you're gonna have to take my word for it in some areas, but just look at these people's faces. These are complete strangers I had never met in my life. You cannot fake that sort of reaction. Alright, we're going up the stairs, which is four flights. I swear I... Oh, never mind. Oh man, I hope the GoPro can pick this up. It's so pretty and so creepy. And I don't want to be the last one. Oh, no, 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 no. This thing is still going crazy. Whoa, this thing is going crazy. Wow, so check it out. This thing is relatively quiet, but if we head over here towards that window, which is where a young female threw herself out of, the closer I get, the crazier this thing starts to go off. Guys, I'm not making this up. This is insane. Look at this. Look at it. You know what's crazy? I feel completely normal in this building. Like, I feel as if... as if nothing, honestly. Whoa! Oh shoot, that was just... them. I, I think... what? A young playwright's play that did not go so well led him to basically commit suicide in this stage right here I don't know how many years ago and we're allowed to go up on it so let's do it mine's not sounding too much because I have it in the wrong position right now but be very careful coming up and down these stairs weird wow like everything else energy here is super and we can't go past a certain point and down there is the dressing room a lot of activities take some pictures maybe up here let's see the rest of the dressing room these old doors.
Oh, uh, no. By the stairs, where? Yeah, like on the other side of the stage. Like that room gives me like, especially if, like when you look up the stairs, it like really sort of like gives me that vibe. Okay. Ooh. That is creepy. Nope. <laughs> I want to keep looking though. Wait. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> I kept wanting to look at it. Oh, it's no. weird. I'm, I'm, being told, I'm like feeling like not like don't go up there. I mean, obviously I was like don't go up, but I wouldn't stop staying. Oh, oh, I scared myself with. <laughs> oh, the thing up there. Yeah, it looks like eyes. There's nothing up here. You're going up. He's. I think he said do not go past the stairs. Yo, this lady's got it's balls. <laughs> it's the air conditioning vent. Up there. You just went up there like nothing. Wow. Well, mine turned all off. But it turned really off up there. Kind of weird. All right, that just about concludes the tour. One of the balls. I tried to get this on video, but I don't know why the GoPro didn't capture. But the ball that was originally there when we got there before we threw the new one actually ended up moving while we were upstairs I'm so sad I didn't I literally got it on video but my GoPro decided to delete it I don't know maybe it was the spirits they didn't want me you know putting their evidence out there but uh it was crazy man you literally you have to ask the spirits not to follow you home because even if you're joking and you tell them to do it they will so uh the best thing to go home to my airbnb with i don't know how much i'm gonna be able to sleep with that kind of information but uh wow what a tour i have so much to say i don't even know where to start but uh for now we're heading back to the cigar club check out ybor city at night and it's not even the weekend yet it's only Thursday but yeah I'm gonna go get my food and I might keep walking around check it out but ultimately I gotta go back to the BNB cuz a girl gotta wake up early tomorrow for yet another adventure but I'm definitely coming back here one day it's so cool I love it and just like that I'm back in my BNB. Um, I actually, I ended up walking around Ebor a little bit, um, you know, just kind of seeing the nightlife. Though I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit. It wasn't as litty as it probably will be in the weekend. It is Thursday after all, but I I at least wanted to just check it out and just for myself. I didn't really record much, um, but Jesus Christ, today was crazy. Um, <laughs> I I can't believe that in every single one of these vlogs, something unexpected always happens. Every single time. And if it's not in the vlog, then it's in just the day. But anyways, now we're going to take a look at the pictures. I'm not going to look at them right now because uh, I'm alone in an Airbnb after going to one of the most haunted places in America. No thank you. But I did take a lot of pictures. and. I'm going to leave it up to you to write in the comments if you see anything unusual in these pictures because sometimes I, I could miss something that could be clear as day to your eyes. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching once again and I'll see you back tomorrow.
because <laughs> tomorrow's gonna be another long adventurous day. So let's take a look at these pictures, shall we?